Meditation itself is a radical act. It's a radical act of sitting with the truth of what's happening yes. now, where it's much easier to pour that glass of wine or do whatever that, we all have yeah. these ways of coping. Yeah. And they work. Drink that wine and, and, and go shopping online. Yeah. Quick fix, the quick fix. And again, it works <laughs> for a while. And I'm speaking your language, right? About, mm -hmm. you know, health, total health and wellness. It Absolutely. works until it doesn't. Until you wake up right. one day. And in meditation, I talk a lot about the path of wakefulness. You know, meeting each moment fresh as it is. Welcome to Functional Medicine Coaching Moms Podcast where simplifying healthy lifestyle change for moms is the only goal. Hi, today we are very excited to have guest Cheryl Wilson, creator and owner of CW Body and Soul. This is an episode is for you if you ever struggled with meditating or practicing mindfulness consistently. Or even if you've never tried meditation before and want to learn more about its benefits and values and how that can make a difference in your life. I also want to add that Cheryl is a mom, teenager, mom of two, son and a teenage daughter. We're all in this together. Cheryl is a certified Phoenix Rising yoga therapist with a background in Buddhist meditation coaching and Reiki energy healing. She has a passion for teaching embodied flow, restorative, and yin yoga, and also specializes in helping individuals with stress, exhaustion, addictive patterns, disconnection, anxiety, and trauma through a trauma-informed, bottom-up approach to yoga therapy that focuses on nervous system, uh, nervous system regulation. And just to add, I know a lot of our moms can relate to the stress and the anxiety and all these things, so we're very excited that you're here with us today. Absolutely. And I want to add that Cheryl's mission is to support people's inner healing and move them towards a meaningful life experience with less stress and anxiety and more fulfilling work and relationships. And on a personal note, I have to add that um, I, Cheryl and I were classmates in elementary school and friends wow. in high school. Yes. Yep. So we go way back. And we reconnected during the pandemic when I started taking Cheryl's uh, yoga and meditation classes. So it's very exciting. Um, and I have to put myself in the category of someone that really struggled with meditation. I couldn't do it consistently. And I have to say that Cheryl's class really helped me prioritize it and make a practice for myself. So we're very excited to have you today. Oh, I'm really excited. Thanks for having me. Yes. And I want to add on a personal level that today, um, Cheryl was so wonderful to invite me into her meditation class and I sat in. And so I, I do practice meditation and I, and I, and I'm, and you know, I consider myself to be pretty consistent and I, um, never have attended a uh, uh, a live um, meditation sitting as I did this morning with Cheryl, uh, Kristen and I attended. And um, I really, I don't know what I thought going into it. I just thought like, all right, this is cool. Like I'm going to meditate with other women and it's kind of cool. Um, but I have to say that it, 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 it was, um, you know, I'm still kind of processing, but it brought me to another level. And uh, just the guiding, I felt like it just how you worked with all the physical, like getting us set up inside ourselves to be in that meditative state and just the whole process. I was um, really, really enjoyed it. And so I uh, definitely recommend anyone listening to take up the offer that will be coming up at the end of this episode. So stay tuned for that. So Cheryl, please start by sharing a little bit about how you became a yoga and meditation instructor. Well, I just want to say thanks to the both of you. And it's a real treat, Raquel, to meet you today and have you experience a Sangha sit with us um, online. 
And Kristen, of course, my heart melts. Uh, we've known each other <laughs> such a long time. It's uh, really a blessing to have you on alongside of me in this journey. And so happy that I could guide both of you today in meditation. Yes. Um, yeah, so I like to think, um, just real quick, uh, my inspiration uh, to study yoga, even beginning before that Reiki, energy healing, and then yoga, yoga therapy, alongside of uh, Buddhist psychology and meditation. Um, my main inspiration and my why was really to help human beings suffer less. And that word suffer could come in the forms of anxiety, stress, anything that makes you feel separation, separation from yourself, your true self that's really calm, open, that free state, that flow state um, that really helps you flourish. Um, my other huge inspiration was really uh, from a young period of my life was witnessing my father struggle with mental health, health and his mental wellness. Um, mm -hmm. I saw really young that if we don't have the tools to skillfully work with our own minds, um, it could really make life much harder than it has to be. So that really informed my why. And looking back, probably about eight years ago was when my yoga journey began, was when I actually had two younger kids, my kids right now are currently teenagers, but when they were young, I was home a few years. That was about eight, nine years ago or so. And I decided, wow, I, I miss teaching. My uh, formal education was with a background of education and the kids were much younger. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna go back. And I went back and it was completely overwhelming. And I found it brought up a lot of anxiety. Um, I had to go back to night school to get a second master's degree and then having to juggle being mom. And I had what I call my first spiritual awakening or what felt like at the time, not quite a blessing. I felt like right. I had a whole um, anxiety meltdown of sorts. And I basically showed up to that job went into a feeling, a sense of overwhelm, and my world was falling apart. I didn't like it. It was just too much. And I left. And at that time, I called that my dark night of the soul awakening. And I was like, wow, but I thought that was what it looked like to have it all. You know, I have the house, I have the kids, it's time for me to go back. And it wasn't the job I thought it was and a whole host of other things. And for a while, I felt like, wow, this is not good. I blew up my career and I was deeply stressed out. And that's where I found myself and I found my mission. And I began to yoke or what yoga really means is to you this idea of union with our body mind spirit that mm. although of course i love children it wasn't the right time nor the right fit and it put me on this whole other path path of awakening it was kind of like felt like the blonde buddha like i was going to <laughs> love that the this blonde buddha path of doubt and um it wasn't for me. My calling at that point was to really stay the path with being a mom. And I wanted to understand myself and I under wanted to deeply understand um, even that decision, what, what I was doing, what was I running from, the challenges. And it put me on the path to work with my own self and go deep. So I studied yoga, began to meditate, and all these years later, um, actually a few years back, built my first website 
And with all the knowledge I gathered, I had this inspiration, this fire in me to help others along their path in the way of yoga therapy, getting us out of our minds and into our bodies, yoga and meditation, which I love helping people work with their own minds in a skillful way. Yeah. I mean, that's truly an amazing story and that you didn't just push through with the job because I feel like a lot of people would have just been like, well, this is part of it. You know, I'm working now and I have to juggle all these things and I'm expected to do this, but you really were able to step back and realize like this wasn't the fit and there was another path. And so that's very inspiring, I think, for people to hear that you were able to, you know, go in this different direction and now you're helping people find themselves, you know, as you helped yourself. Absolutely. And it, and it, at the time to make that decision um, and really, it felt really like an off balance period. It was a deep questioning and hard at the time, but the biggest gift to put me exactly where I needed to be. So yeah, it's, uh, that's, that was what set me on this path. But if I looked back even deeper, it was this understanding of people do get stressed out. And most of the people that come to me are looking to resolve that feeling of um, stress, overwhelm, and it might not look like walking out on your job, right? It may not look like that, but it's giving them the tools to stay present with themselves. So instead of running away from it um, and also looking at the compulsions and addictions people have, what's one way of coping with your stressors might be buying something online. Ooh, I feel good. It's that little hit. I feel a little better. And I'm not saying it's not fun to get a new purse or get that new lipstick. Sure. But when you have 20 of them floating around or a lot of those yeah. shoes and you're filling your life up with these external things, when they start to get old or they go away, you start to realize there's a mental chasing yeah. and, um, coming back to this idea of meditation, when I started to sit with myself, especially when the world shut down during COVID mm -hmm. and I was sitting and I was watching the seasons change, like, when is this going to end? Right. That was, mm -hmm. I think a collective trauma. And I think us as women, we saw how all of a sudden kids were thrust, you know, they were, they were home again. We're managing households. There was nowhere to run. Right. So no. looking within and grounding myself in the present moment, meditation itself is a radical act. It's a radical act of sitting with the truth of what's happening yes. now where it's much easier to pour that glass of wine or do whatever that we all have yeah. these ways of coping yeah. and they work. Drink that wine and, and, and go shopping online. Yeah. <laughs> quick fix, the quick fix. And again, it works <laughs> for a while and I'm speaking your language, right? About, mm -hmm. you know, health, total health and wellness. It Absolutely. works until it doesn't until you wake right. up one day and in meditation, I talk a lot about the path of wakefulness, you know, meeting each moment fresh as it is. And all of a sudden we wake up, we're like, Whoa, on this path of wakefulness. Wow. This is not working for me. Just like that feeling when I decided this job isn't working, I don't feel good on the inside. I'm stressed out as yes. you know what mm -hmm. so meditation is a way of i like to visualize a butterfly right but before the butterfly is the cocoon phase we can't just be a butterfly you have to go through the cocoon and we're in the dark it's dark in there and even if you picture the caterpillar it, that whole metamorphosis it's in gook 
And, you know, when we're sitting with ourselves, we see those phases. We have like a front row seat to all of our mental processes yes. um, and the habitual patterns. Like, oh, I drank yes. that half a bottle last night. I'm sitting here and my body doesn't feel good. And we start to notice we got to drop some of the BS. We have to drop yes. those stories that keep us small as women even. Yes, and respect the process. That metamorphosis uh, yeah. that you're speaking of. Respect the process um, so that you can get to the other side. Absolutely. You know, you know I just want to ask you, um, you know, for like that mom out there that loves what she's hearing and, um, you know, is eager to have some of that in her life. What, what is the, what are some of the, you know, just to start off easy to start the process, what is something that they can do today um, to start, get started on this? Um, you know, uh, what, what advice would you give that mom? Besides attend your, your group, right? Cause that's, that's, Absolutely. you know, show up. <laughs> and that's how I hacked myself. I joined Cheryl's group, but if you don't have that opportunity or you can't do that yet, what can you do? Yeah. Yes. What can you do? So first of all, I want to remind everyone that listens to this podcast today, that first of all, you are your own guru. Okay. Yes. There's no other teacher for your life, but you. Sometimes we do need, I don't want to say the word, but I'll say it, um, a spiritual friend. And I'm not talking religious, but mm -hmm. someone that might be just a little further ahead on a, on a path. Yeah. Again, it's not mm -hmm. religion, but it's more like this, who wants to wake up and meet reality as it is and not check out, but check in. Um, and the yes. way to really do it, and I can't say this enough, is I'm a firm believer of adding meditation to your day. Even if you commit to five minutes in the morning and five at night, um, and it's not the duration, it's the frequency, because you yes. get to see what's happening with your mind and the practice of letting it go and come back to the breath. So it's this idea of letting go and breathing and meeting the moment exactly as it is without adding on stories, because quite honestly, you only have this present moment to show up for. And I often ask my new students, what is your intention? Why practice? And a lot of them do want to stress a lot less. Many of my students have struggled with anxiety, depression, and they go to their doctor and they get a pill and that is yeah. fine. I'm not judging that. It could be very useful and skillful to address something that's going on, but that doesn't resolve what the root cause is. So meditation is one of the ways to calm down and if that's not working for you, it's really nice to find somebody who is a meditation teacher that you have that rapport with, that's going to hold that space for you to mm -hmm. touch into your innate basic goodness. Because in the lineage that I've studied with, we come from a place that all of us, each and every one of us are inherently good whole, complete. And a lot of spiritual practices speak to this. The problem is we have forgotten from a very young age, society has said something else. You need the next thing to be happy. You need to acquire, you need more and more stuff. Right. But what I'm suggesting is stop that bewildered mind, that chasing after everything out there find the breath and rest in the true sense of peace. I'm going to say, I really like how you connect to the why, because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, when you're, you're trying to start this, and this was my problem, I was 
I wanted to do it because I thought, gee, I really need a way of dealing with my stress that's healthy. That mm-hmm. that would be an, another way to kind of calm myself down and self-soothe. Mm-hmm. But I found that it was, you know, what am I really connecting to? Like, wh- like why do I really want to do this besides just reducing stress? Mm-hmm. And what I found is that the more I did it, the more you know, time I put in, and I didn't put a lot of time, like short amounts of time, Mm -hmm. but that I could be become more clear in just the way I parent my kids. Like you can be more present. You're a better listener. Mm -hmm. I could be a better wife, like things like that. I feel like connect you more to the practice because you definitely need discipline for the practice, right? It's, Mm -hmm. it's like anything, if you're going to, you know, work out, you want to, you have to have discipline to be able to do that, to stick with it and and things like that. So I think it was helpful when you connected, you know, or why. I feel like the practice connects me to my true authentic self. And it, and when I feel connected to that, I feel that's my strongest place for me. And like Kristen said, um, I'm able to, I'm a single parent. And so I, I feel um, I'm able to parent better from a, a, a centered place, not a place of fear because of whatever. Mm. So meditation has been my grounding um, for my strength and power. And for me, that comes from love. Love is like the ultimate power. If you can, if I can really uh, navigate my life through the power of love, um, then I, I feel like I'm in truest alignment with myself. Um, and so for me, um, if I'm in a, in a feel, you know, like just being a single parent, like how am I parenting my kids and working and, and not losing sight of, of, you know, not being home as much or this type of thing. And if I notice that I'm in a lot of fear, I'm like, oh, wow, I need to meditate. <laughs> I need to meditate because I need to, I know that I am being supported. You know, it's not just the things that we see with our physical eyes. It's the things that we're connected to. And and that's how meditation has helped me so much uh, throughout the years. And I was wondering, Cheryl, as we wrap it up, um, what are some signs like that a mom that is starting out you know, sometimes I, I know I've heard people say like, yeah, I meditate, but I, I feel like it doesn't really do anything or, you know, how can, what are the signs that meditation is actually taking an effect in your opinion? You feel a lot happier with yourself and there's less actually, you could feel happier with yourself, but then also feel raw emotions and sensations more because you're tapped in, you're connected yeah. to yourself. So yes. it's not about feeling all, all positive vibes, like all the time. In fact, I went through a period where I felt a full range of my life experiences landing on me. And I think the way it impacts everybody is really different. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I were to say um, this whole very idea of mindfulness, as John Kabat-Zinn spoke about it, is this ability to pay attention in the present moment on purpose in a non-judgmental way. That's his definition of mindfulness. And um, a lot of my one-on-one students talk about how they really, like Kristen mentioned, they feel more present to their life and they're able to meet the moment. And when we're, when we stop, what I'll quote, the stinking thinking, (laughs) stinking thinking about what's happening and we're just meeting the moment fresh, or even meeting that other person, fresh, whoever it is. Maybe we had a bad situation years ago with someone and they're in front of us. It's the practice of meeting each moment fresh. And the more we sit and we sit with ourselves, there's a softening. It's it, it, As you meditate, try it out, everybody, those who listen, 
just mm-hmm. try it today. Sit and in the lineage I instruct um, a lot of the times is a shamatha calm abiding meditation, which is really allowing the mind to land in the body, feeling the anchor is the breath, the in and out breath, very easy. If you could breathe, you can meditate. And the yes. more we sit with ourselves, it comes down to this feeling of, and I'm actually picturing it, a wall. A wall begins to come down. And as we soften towards ourselves and we see all the ways we've been unskillful sometimes because we're watching, we're getting a front row seat. One of the big takeaways of meditation that I have been told and I have experienced is this sense of compassion. Mm. When we could see in the ways that we've been unskillful in our lives and even really skillful, we might say, wow, that came up and wow, it was awesome. But we start to have compassion towards ourselves, yes, which is big. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Mm-hmm. And we're compassionate towards other people. And that means that person you built a case against it might be even someone in your past, an ex, uh, whatever, or an ex yourself. Yourself, uh-huh. you have this compassion yeah. towards self and other, and in this way, we can let everyone off the hook because everyone's doing the best they can with the tools yes. they have in any given moment. Meditation gives us that real shot to connect back. To to our own, I'll call it Buddha nature, our own innate gold, our inner goodness. And the more you could find it within yourself, you have a better shot of then seeing it in others, no matter what. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's a real treat. We would, uh, yeah, we would love to have you back on again yes. for yeah. sure, because, uh, you know, definitely we need more time to, you know, um, there's so many more questions that I have for you that I'll save for another episode. Oh, that would be great. I love it. I really have fun. I just want to add um, where you can find Cheryl for our listeners. Yes. Um, Cheryl can be found on Instagram at CW body and soul. And right now, if you DM the code FMCM, that stands for Functional Medicine Coaching Moms, um, for you can get a complimentary group meditation class with Cheryl, which is what Raquel and I did this morning that we really thought was so helpful. Um, So if you are interested in doing that, you should definitely take advantage of it. And again, that was FMCM. You can DM that to her. And then also you can visit her website at cwbodyandsoul.com to sign up for any of her meditation sits, her privates, and her yoga therapy classes. Well, great. Thank you so much. I hope to see some of your listeners or all of your listeners in a sit or any way that I could be supportive on their journey to wholeness. And thank you, ladies. It was a real treat to be here with the both of you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks, Thank Cheryl. you for the time. We Thank really appreciate you. it. That was my treat, my pleasure. See everybody next time. The information provided in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended for the purpose of diagnosing, curing, treating, or preventing any disease. We are functional medicine certified health coaches and not licensed medical professionals. The opinions and advice of guests are their own and also not considered to be medical advice. Always consult with a healthcare professional when making any healthy lifestyle changes. We would love to hear from our mom community. Any wellness topics that are high on your list, please DM us at Functional Medicine Coaching Moms. We can also be reached via email at info at functionalmedicinecoachingmoms.com. You can find Functional Medicine Coaching Moms podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button.